So this is this is sweet. I'm, I can't believe we're here today. I never thought I'd see the day. You and I sitting here and bumped in, in your office. Couple old railroaders. Yeah. Um, so this is awesome here. Uh, Evan Young here, Kyle Johnson. Um, been wanting to do this one for a while. Kyle is the reason I got into real estate. Um, we used to work at the railway together. He used to be my supervisor, <laughs> which is crazy. It seems like yesterday though, man. I'm trying to think how, how, how did we start or how did you find out I was doing real estate and what made you, I was, try, I was trying to think about that the other day before when you asked me to do this, how, what initiated all this or I think and then out of North, I think you said I bought my books and I can't remember why or what. Man, I just, um, I remember when you, when you were doing it secretly, right? Because yeah. obviously you don't want anyone to, to no. know. You get and fired if, if they found out or... They yeah, or whatever, yeah, right. right. So what, what, what made you want to like do that? What made you... So, well, you know, because yeah, I guess you worked right in the world with us. There was no kind of end in sight where we were. It was just, you know, going in day by day and... I was trying to figure out a way to go back home. Because you lived in Moncton and you were traveling St. John. Yeah, it's just the four on, four off and the traveling. You know, St. John's not far, you know, your family's in Moncton and I don't know, the family wasn't going to move and then, you know, DSR was putting pressure on me to either pay for university or put more overtime because I was a supervisor. And, right. You know, I, geez, you can't work like we work a lot now, but we're our own, <laughs> our own boss. But when you're working for somebody else and you're just doing overtime, it doesn't really, it doesn't really go nowhere, and you can't do that forever. So that's when I looked into it. And was there somebody here that kind of put that bug in your ear about the? So just, <laughs> remember Bob Boyd there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So me and him were talking on the night shift once, and I don't know. He we talked. He used to he did construction before. Okay. And I didn't know that. And I remember right. talking about rentals and stuff, and I was like, oh, maybe I should get a, you know, I'm just figure. I want to do something else, and I want to have another income. And I said, oh, we should buy a rental or, or whatever together. And then he was like, yeah, 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 maybe, yeah, maybe we could look at it. And I just went deep into Rich Dad, Poor Dad podcasts, about investing, and then, then I started thinking, okay, I got to figure out a way to get out, get out of here, and yeah. do that. And then once you've start doing your own thing didn't you find it like you started to resent your job more and more well you're just Born itching there. you're just itching to get out at some once you start liking like i was starting to check myself out because i, I wanted to be over there right i wanted to be here when you left like you were building the house and everything like yeah. that was a big move like you had didn't you just finish building like yeah we just finished building we just finished uh, having the the baby it was i just had it there uh Two or three weeks off, and I was still doing real estate like at the beginning. So yeah, it was. So did you have like a big nest egg when you left, or you just like I was done? I'm done. When we with Andre, the manager, he was like, okay, when you have twenty listings and you're doing that much volume, the goal was to have enough income, or I was doing enough income in the pipe that I could leave my you know 120 grand yeah job a year, which we had we had pretty good jobs yeah. So once I had that, plus I was at the point where I was, I was not really healthy because I wasn't sleeping, yeah. working nights, mm -hmm. driving home, uh, going doing real estate during the day. Eating out all Eating out, time. Tim's, fucking just junk, right? Like yeah. Just, anyways, it wasn't really healthy. And I just, I had enough uh, at a certain point. Then our boss that we were talking about at the time, he was putting pressure on me and he was starting to pick on me and trying to you know, trying to send me signs that I should probably step down because they knew about mm -hmm. what was going on. So, and I, I just had enough and I took the leap. I had to get out of it. It wasn't healthy. It's tough though, eh? But it, after you take that leap, you're like, it almost probably made you work harder. Yeah. Right? You're like, you got more time and you, and you go into survival mode, right? I was already in survival mode, but it was even more, plus I was feeling better mentally because of all that stress was gone of yeah. having to do and Both, right? I can relate so so much. So once I seen you um, dabbling in it when you first started, and then it started getting my wheels turned because I always wanted more. Like I was doing something on the side, whether it was like a uh, mower lawns or whatever, right? Yeah. And then I seen you starting to dabble in it, and and then you took the leap, and I was like, man, there's more to life 
and mean and like McAdam away from your kids and like yeah. <laughs> you know and you just want to live that have a good life for your kids and your family and that's everything to me man that business family so like you can provide that for them if you want to go on the trips or do whatever and put them in the sports they want to play or anything right but once you left I was like okay I kind of like I looked up to you from that I was like holy frig like he's doing it right so I was like if he can do it I can do it so then I I took the course and I did it and after I took the course man it was like it was bad like people started to like at first like it was like you're not allowed to do something different this is what you're supposed to do yeah do you know what I mean yeah it was weird it was a weird feeling and then I found at work like they didn't they didn't like it at all and anyway man I wish I had to listen to you a long time ago and left but I so you did both for like a year a year yeah I did a year yeah I did both for like six yeah I can't believe it it was bad long. man like getting home at six in the morning sleeping for two hours um it's kind of like uh, having two lives you were oh, living man. two two lives right away and yeah, yes, they, you, you know exactly it's hard to explain and it's so hard and then like you're going to showings and stuff and you're really trying to pull yourself together but you're exhausted and yeah. it, w- it was tough man and then I finally took the leap there about a year ago and like it, there's there's it can be stressful working for yourself but it's stressful working for somebody too yeah. and if you're anyone can do it if you put the time in and like Say if you're working for somebody for 40 hours, if you spend that time on something that you really enjoy, it's going yeah. to work. But you need to do the work. Yeah. Like, it, it, when I was just in, when I was in Vegas for a conference, there's pe- like people there, you probably see it. They, you could literally sit there and tell people exactly what to do and how to do it. Yeah. But you have to do it consistently. And, but it was a big, big jump. So like Kyle, yeah, he's our, my supervisor back in the railway days. And that was... That was, uh, man, it seems like yesterday, and it's funny. I mean, it, it goes by fast. It yeah. does. Uh, you, we, we tend to easily forget what we've been through really quick, and we're just, everything going forward is really slow. Yeah. But everything that we went through. It's so slow, man. You, I try not to look in the rearview mirror too much. Yeah. I always try to look in the front window, but you want, I want everything like now. Yeah. You gotta, it's all baby steps, right? Yeah. But now you're, like, in, out of all the companies and Canada, you're like the top real estate agent in Canada. You're up there. Right? Is that? I think so. I, I don't know if we got stats for that. I, I, an, an exit, or exit right now. It's it, on closed sides, um, North American. Um, I know in New Brunswick right now. I well, think the, blowing just, I don't know what. I didn't really check. I always try to see. Okay, how many ends did I do last year? How can I, how can I improve? What can I do differently? You know, uh, the girl I have for marketing, I'm always trying to find different ways or she's always bouncing stuff off me to try or with my assistant, okay, how can we get more leads? How can we, Yeah. how can we drum more Never business? Because if not, if you stop, nothing comes in anymore. Or, geez, I could be at the top of my game and I don't know where is if I drop, somebody else is right there. 100%. We're just talking to uh, a guy, actually, we probably know uh, Mike Bork here, he won't do. Yeah. I was talking to him and he's like, man, like, you think that you're doing well, so you stop doing things, yeah. um, you know, promoting yourself and getting out there. He goes, and then if you don't, if you stop, like the pipeline will dry up. Yeah. Oh, you can't, you can never <laughs> and he stop. said that on one of the calls. He's like, yeah, man, like I stopped for a bit and now I'm feeling it. Right. Yeah. So he's like, I have to get out there. But, and I, I, I just, yeah, you can't stop, man. You got to keep going. I respect that for you because you literally don't stop. Yeah, every, every week, week. Every week uh, I look at it and I've got like, okay, people I can call, uh, we're, we're finding ways to tap into my sphere, but it's, we're going to try different things with the, with my sphere, you know, mail out. Uh, Do you use your sphere a lot? Or are you a big I am, but I'm, I was only doing mass emails, but it wasn't really, co- it wasn't really like strategically monthly. done. So we were doing like, you know, just an email drip, you know, sometimes uh, two or three weeks. Okay maybe once a month sometimes um but I'm not i'm not utilizing it as much as i can so this this year we're gonna try to push to, to do that i think that's a pr- i just did a, I did a big call on that on the crm yeah. um i think that's i'm really working on getting that dialed in kyle because um 
I went back and like you can go back near FinTrack and yeah. everybody's birthdays are in there. Yeah. So it set them all up on smart plans. So now like you can have people getting birthday emails and yeah, you don't do, even know, we've right? We've been doing that for a long time. Stuff like that and like uh, one year home anniversaries. Yeah. But it, it's all like if you're not doing any of that, like touching and following up and yeah. but man, like you're you're killing it, dude. Like yeah. and you have uh how many doors do you have now or how many properties do you own? So I get asked that a lot, and I think I have around 300 units. We're building. Uh, I always use the same the same <laughs> number. It could be more. It could be less. I, I have to count. He, even, so he lost count. <laughs> doesn't even know how many he owns. Yeah. I might. He's like, I might own the one we're sitting in right now. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Always. I don't know. I, I. It's my retirement plan. You know, with everything that happened in the states with the real estate. I think it's coming here, man. You, you something gotta, like that uh, you gotta diversify you gotta do certain things it could happen it could change and mm -hmm. you know it's i don't know so i'm building we got an 87 unit starting in moncton that we're starting to build we got approved for financing are and you doing that all your own or i got a partner on that one yeah we have a 87 uh, unit 56 unit not too far from here going up so six story with underground parking uh 16 unit that we're doing as well that one's kind of almost done um, the smaller smaller projects turn around quicker, so they're they're better. Those are That's big why projects. I like the yeah. I like the old the old buildings or the smaller old buildings because they turn around quick. But the big ones are, you develop the land, it takes you about a year. Get all the engineering plans, all the all the site plans, all the city stuff. Like yeah, the we're stuff. hyper people. I know you're, right. you're like me, and, and you want it now. You want it yesterday to go quick, but it's with development. I found that's the only set, the only negative for me is that it takes so long to set up, and because uh, it's bigger numbers and you and know, you're uh, like farming all this money before you're making any money. So so pretty much the way we to do it is is to make it count is that you you buy your land if you buy it at the right price you can get it appraised for a certain amount depending on how many units you can put on it so let's say so 87 units we are an appraisal at 15k a door so okay. cmhc mli select will want you to have five percent of your land plus up to five to ten percent liquidity to show right. amongst partners for the bank because then in case that the interest rate goes up when you're done your build it takes about two years right so jeez it's a long time yeah Ooh. yeah it's it's gonna be worth it and when we're mm -hmm. done, but it's a long haul. A lot of things can happen. And, and you're years. not collecting any rent on this for two years and you're fronting all this money. Well, that, the like, way IQ you... Commercial has it set up that they do, uh, they're do they doing a lot of the fronting, you just need to come up with the 5% plus whatever they require. Depending on the project, it can be a little bit more. Is there grants and some things you can get for those? Or they build it better? So the MB powers, the stuff, the MLI is kind of the grant. So they're, they're willing to go at a higher loan to value if you hit all your energy efficiency targets, all your affordability targets. So we have IQ commercial structures, all that for, for us. Yeah. You package it to the banks and then we all as lender, uh, owners or partners have to approve, get approved for it. and then. Right. Off to the race. So then we got a builder yeah. and then he does it. Yeah. That's crazy. So you're building all those. You have like 300, your top agent in Canada, North America. Like, how do you do you sleep there? I sleep, uh, I sleep, I sleep okay. I guess. I don't know. Like, how many, like, what time do you go to bed? Depends. Roughly. Now I've been draining a little bit more there, so I'm a little bit more tired at night. So probably around 10 30. And you get up about 4 or 4 30. No, I'm not. A, I, I, I have 6 50. 6.50? I knew I, I seen him as like a 4.30 guy. Like, yeah. I remember when we used to work, the Supers used to work 6 to 6 there. Well, six I worked nice. at 6 a.m. I had a hard time getting up at 5.15. I, I can. I want to start. Oh, when you slept all day or in the morning? In the morning, oh, in the morning. Six, I always had a hard time getting up. I don't know okay. why. But I maybe it's because we work nights. Like uh, man, I swear to God, that's probably ten me. years. We, I work nights for about at least a good ten years. Screw me, right off. I man. could sleep all day, no problem. I was one of. I was lucky for that. Some people couldn't sleep, but I was able to sleep. I can't. I have a terrible time sleeping, man. I, it, I we used to work like crazy shifts, like yeah. like crazy. Remember shit. we used to when the the oil started there when it was coming in St. John, and we used to make our own hours. We were working. Oh yeah. In a, in a in a day we would double, or we we would do double, 
You could do two devils, two hours. 16 hours. You had to take eight hours rest, or 12, was it, how much rest? It was like eight, I think. <laughs> they didn't even care, they could just come to work. But it was like the rest reset, and then we were doing that over and over again. And that's over and over. all kinds of weird freaking hours, I remember. Is And that's what, is that how you get a job there when that started? When, yeah, when, when that yeah, started, okay. CN had trained us, and we were laid off. We were laid off, we came to St. John. Yeah. Before. Yeah, I remember. Man, I used to was... pay at Chipman Hill. I stayed at the yes. old Chipman Hill. Yes, yeah, yeah, man, and that's crazy. And little, then little bachelor apartment that was really tight. Actually, it's a good idea for real estate. And I was thinking about. There that. we go. Let's see, yeah. I filled a few of them. <laughs> one bedroom, <laughs> boarding house. Tight. Holy shit! There was a one bedroom, little kitchenette, little bathroom, shower. Must have been three hundred square feet. Not even. When you started, you weren't, and you weren't with your wife now when you first moved. Yeah. We had just started dating, uh, like. I met her before in BSR. Like I was working as a bouncer at the bars when I met her. Wow, um, that was, uh, I was laid off from CN. She was a. I remember like the fact that she when you were doing both, she was like an awesome supporter, right? Like pushing you. She would drive. She would drive down and then, like, yeah. She well, she was, was supportive. Actually, her father-in-law still jokes about it. He thought I was stupid doing it. He says, like, why would you leave a nice job with, with, a, with a salary and a my, pension and an RSP with the Irvings? He says, you're losing your mind. I said, I can't be here anymore. I said, there's not, I'm not happy. My own parents are like that too. I don't know if it was that like class of age group yeah. or what, like, man, my, and that, that's what took me so long to leave. And like, no, you can't do this. This is secure. This is what you're supposed to do. And like, it's your own, I've done this, like the people that are closest to you. Yeah. And family that honestly are the hardest ones to. And they're, you know, they get say that because they're afraid. Yeah. It's easy to get afraid of. That. People get afraid of new things or, or stuff that doesn't, there's no guarantee. Yeah. There's nothing that we do right now in real estate that's a guarantee. That could all go away tomorrow. But if right. you work, if your work ethic's good and you put the time in, I think that's what's saving us is that we were always putting a lot of hours in already. Yeah. So I find if you're, Putting a lot of hours, maybe it's not the right idea for a lifestyle to always do that for the rest of your life. But I think to become successful, you still have to put in the time. Hundred percent. Nobody's yeah. gonna be successful if you're not, Kyle. So that's like, there's <clears throat> there's a lot. Like, how many realtors are there a month? And what what what's this? Do you know how many there are in New Brunswick? I keep hearing five hundred or something like that. But yeah, we're like one twenty five in this office. In this office. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a ton, I suppose. Yeah, we're a lot of agents here. Um, but that's enough. There's like a, st I think it's a, tr uh, there's a stat that like only 20% of the realtors in New Brunswick actually do the work. That's what they say. There's 20% of all realtors that do all the deals. Yeah. The other 80% and are kind of just dabbling or just hold the license. Yeah, yeah, man. You just, and I, I, uh, I'll tell you this. I stopped following a lot. Of, I I don't pay attention to anybody else, man. If they're not like, I just stay in my lane. I'm like, okay, this is what I'm doing now. I used to be terrified to do this. What we're doing here, yeah. Like social media, and like, I unfollow. Like I didn't. I unfollowed a lot of people because it was distracting, right? Yeah. I follow you. I like your stuff. It's awesome. That's one thing about your your um, your videos and all your content. Like it's just you being you. Thank you to your. Uh, your marketing lady over there, <laughs> she kind of pushes you for that, but it's just, yeah. it's you being you, and that's how I'm trying to be, and kind of like, that's what we're trying to do here today, like, yeah. show people where we came from, or what we did, so we know what it's like to work, so yeah. when you have a client, like, if something goes wrong in a deal call, you're like, okay, like, this is the big deal, we can figure this out, and then I pitch myself, like, smashing, uh, uh, being under a box car at three in the morning, or something like that, is way worse, than this electrical problem. I still, I still remember <laughs> being when the wind is really cold there and it's like minus 30 and it's snowing hard and you got your radio in the mouth and you got two bella clavas on and you're fully yes. like, a, you're like, you're so stuffed up with, with clothes. Riding and a chip still, car. Riding a chip car <laughs> holding on. And I'll give you three, oh, more, yeah. three more cars. Yeah. Two more cars. Okay, <laughs> stop. And then you're like, oh my God. You're like literally, yeah. no joke, like minus yeah. 30 blizzard riding the side of this <laughs> rail car for like, yeah. like from this, uh, uh, like to the wall or something. I was strong, I was stronger back then than I was here hanging on. So you had like no grit there on the bar oh, like that. Yeah. It was, I remember one time it was so cold. I got off the car, got off the car, my gloves stuck to the, to the, 
the ladder and the gloves kept going and i was like oh well this is nice this is nice. what am i doing here and then that was one day i went home and was like i just can't keep doing this i can't yeah. live like this forever and like i'm tired i'm bored out of deep but it becomes the same after a while you hit a wall know, right it's the same we had done everything right and there's nowhere else to go you're like you, you hit that wall you can't you can't they, do anything new oh you're you're at the limit right they, they would let me move up they didn't want me to do anything and, and maybe i was in the best employee or whatever but i just maybe it's because i started doing my own thing but i you're on I'm, a better path now than you and, and i say the same thing you know sometimes when it just doesn't work out people tend to just stay where it put because they think there's nothing better but mm -hmm. we decided to try something else and there's all kinds of things for people to do i encourage anybody anyone if there's something they want to do just do it yeah like life's so short kyle like, yeah. and that's what, what i look at but i think that makes us the people we are today and like as good as realtors i think like i think we're both very good with people obviously look at your success and um i'm having now a first year i'm doing this full time best year i ever had but i i don't regret anything i think that's what yeah. made us who we are yeah. made us really good at what we're doing right yeah i mean yeah so we're just kind of here today kind of want to talk about that and tell people where we're coming from who we are yeah and uh yeah pretty crazy man that we're here though i, I never thought i'd see see the day that when we first met that we'd be sitting in your office and bunked up doing this doing yeah. a podcast about where we used to be it's yeah. pretty cool man came a long way uh i had we had went to st john to see some stuff when we just drove at the east yard and she's been kind of pushing on me to do a railroad kind of background like yes, video man. and i was like oh but we're doing it kind of right now in a sense there so yeah. this is a good way to touch back on some roots of you know a lot of people don't understand railway it's a how I, and then how did you guys translate how does it even I, I was trying to explain to her i think you know the whole like timing of cars and shunts and and, and everything kind of helps with the way we plan our day or Fair plan enough. everything right. right so the yeah. type the whole process of but nobody really understands like how what's a conductor or what's an engineer you know how the conductor controls what's a yard master it's really something you don't really it's a lot like yeah. it it was a good job at the time i i liked it when i started but it was uh it was a hard it's a hard like you're doing that till you're 60 that's a hard life man yeah yeah man like most railroaders after they retire i don't think they last very long either no man it's just <laughs> like it's hard I, on the joints I, I just had back surgery there man like uh yeah, what dude, happened with that just uh I'll t well just i think wear and tear over the years but i really screwed it up at work man like yeah we had a train come apart in eight spots one train yeah. one train and everything like eight knuckles eight one knuckles. shot dude, wow. and two drivers so i was out there for like seven hours by myself so i'm thinking man, it was bad it just wasn't left and right it slipped pop, the disc man. yeah popped it was bad man yeah. and uh they thought i was faking the whole bit you know what i mean he, he just wants to be off to do his job and, and then the stress of it all right it was like man once i so when I went off, I, was, I didn't want no paycheck. Just <laughs> no, trying to fake it. Yeah, yeah, trying to fake it, yeah. So when I left, like you said it earlier, the stress, it was just more of a stress keeping it. Yeah. It's, like, it's a big release when, when I left. Yeah. You probably had that same feeling once you leave, like anxiety and then poof. And oh. left, it was like, oh, it's like, it feels so good. I so much time for my life back. Which is weird. It's like the $130,000 a year is gone. But it's, it yeah. feels so good to get rid of it. Yeah. But yeah, no, so that, it, it's good. So like i'm glad we get to talk about it because i can't talk about this with anyone because nobody understands it what we where we came from it was like nights days nights days cranky tired irritable do this do that yeah, yeah. Sure. and never and thanks for anything like no. so we're very thankful for all of our clients and all of our people today and everything yeah. the people that trust us do but that's i think that's what makes us who we are man yeah Railroaders that turned into realtors. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah. Cheers to that. Cheers. Is there anything you want to touch on today, Kyle? I know you got uh, a big motel you got to get to. You're flipping. I got to get back to St. John for a final walkthrough. No, I think that that was it. No, Any was advice it. for anyone out there who really wants to? Don't be afraid to try something different. No. If even if you're in a job right now, um, 
try something if it's been on your mind try it you know i tried a couple of i always try different new things and try it if it's okay if you fail and you don't like it set it aside and do something else try something else like the, have you failed at any you must like well i just i didn't fail at it but i tried the coaching program to be honest with you guys and i just i'm, I'm more of a deal junkie or i'm more yeah. of a like entrepreneur i liked building it and creating it but i just didn't like the whole coaching program but so what i did is i just put it on pause yeah keep focusing nothing I, nothing i do affects my main real estate i make sure that everything i do does not affect me selling houses or my clients right but i have teams set in place or people that help me do the rentals on my apartment building i got a property manager i got guys that do that uh, construction of the buildings i have partners that are dealing with that that i'm just chiming in right, right in there so if you surround yourself with good people i got a That's good it, licensed yeah. assistant she's got my back and stuff i got a good marketing person that's taking care of that you know, I got a good wife at home that's holding the fort while I'm gone. It's all about having the right people and delegating it. Very really. obsessed with me. I'm, I'm very similar with yeah. you. I got an awesome wife at home. She's very supportive, especially with this job. And um, I think they don't mind at all where we came from. We we're gone all the time. So it's yeah. like if you're going to be out till eight or nine at night showing a house, we were no gone big deal. Already with the real way all the time. Yeah. But having the, I've insisted now as well. I have a virtual assistant as well. That yeah, does a lot of my, uh, uh, he does my email marketing. Yeah. keeps my CRM dial. Yeah, I thought about that too. They're doing a, having a virtual assistant to do some of the stuff to help. I've I've looked into it too. I have a real good one, man. Once we get off here, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about him. Yeah. I'll give you his contact and um, that editors. If you don't have all this stuff in place, like, like, and it's a risk. Once you get to that point, I found is like I just hired an assistant, and yeah. it, that was a risk, man. Like, yeah, like. But I feel like if you don't have these things in place, you start to forget things. You can't serve your clients or grow. You can't get to that next no. level, right? No. Does that make sense? Uh, if it's affecting your service or your client, it means that you need help. So yeah, for sure. Awesome, man. Well, th this was wicked, Kyle. It's Thanks, good to man. see you, man. It's been a while. Good awesome. Good yes, absolutely. Um, Evan Young, Kyle Johnson. We're going to have our contact info here below. If there's anything you need in Moncton, you can reach out to Kyle. Um, I'm in St. John. Anything we can do for you guys, or even if you're just looking for some advice, hey, eh, Kyle, like Sorry. anything at all. Anytime. Anytime at all. All right, guys, have a good one.